episode two of Buncho Talk. Right now, it's gonna be our late night one. We're probably gonna try to do this at least twice a day, or twice a week, or something like that. But uh, I want you to meet my best friend Miguel. Miguel, go ahead and say hi. Yeah. And we're here with our guest, Finest. Hello. So. Let's let's kind of blow some, some minds here. Let's talk about Meet the Bros. Let, let me Meet just... Meet the go. Bros. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to invite me to your game, we'll try, we'll do it in, in Minecraft. But, so, I'll have Miguel take the floor. Go. Where were you born Give and raised? Give it to China. Oh, um, Queens, New York. So what's it like? Uh, what, what was the young Miguel like? Um, very no, um, very noisy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, didn't get into trouble though. Uh, I was uh really. Good kid. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Manhattan and Queens. I was circling both barrels. Um, I did get to live in LA and in Texas for a few months. Yeah, we were talking about LA earlier, but we never really got into Texas. So let's hear about yeah. Texas. Um. I really forgot the name of that little town in Texas, but it's not so that it far. Wasn't Houston. Houston. Huh? So it definitely wasn't Houston. No. No, it wasn't Houston. It was close to Houston, but it, it was... Close, but um, not like exactly in Houston. Yeah. Because Texas, it has a little... Um, it has little towns. It has big towns. It has deserts, you know? Mm-hmm. It's really hot in yeah. the summer. <laughs> oh yeah, Texas is not. I, I remember I used to play and I always used to bring like gallons of water, not even water bottles. Like I mean gallons, like two gallons. Yeah. Yeah, because the heat. Yes. Um, I got to ride horses. Uh huh. Um. I did learn how to shoot. I did learn how to shoot a um revolver mm -hmm. when I was sixteen. Yeah. But that was um in um Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I guess I'll have our guest explain. Give us where he's from, if you want yeah. to. Yeah. Huh? What? Where, 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 where's your hometown? Some my juicy stories. Is... My hometown is actually Long Island, New York. Long Island, I feel you. So give us some juicy details. What, what, what were you growing up? You when you were younger. I was I was more so a very hyperactive child. <laughs> like I never was able to sit still. But it also meant problems the fact that I couldn't sit still. Yeah. So I'm guessing you have ADHD because I know I do and I have a hard time paying attention and sitting still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have I have a big mix of ADHD and then with asthma at the same time, so it was a sort of. A wacky yeah. time. Yeah. Huh? Anything like, else you want to share? Activity, like, I can never think, yeah. think through what's causing me to lose my... We talk with my breathing and all this. And then it's like, yeah, it's just like a ton of stuff happening. But other than that, so mm. far, it's been, most, most, pretty much most of my life is just been fine. Yeah. Well, it's, it's mostly in the New York area. 
Yeah, New York is a beautiful state. I lived in, for the summer, I lived up in Altmar, if you know where that is. That's way Ooh, upstate. I, I know where that is. I've been there before. Small ass town. Everybody knew everybody. Yeah. If you got into trouble, everyone in town knew about it. Pretty much. But I always remember... Okay. We'll go into me now. Because I have a whole lot. and I'll probably take up a good portion. Portion. So, I grew up in a very small town in Maryland. For safety reasons, I'm not going to name the town. Because I still live there. But, I was a problematic child. To put it easy. And I have a mix of ADHD, um, bipolar disorder, um, a couple others that forget off the top of my head. So I've I was always getting into trouble when I even when I was younger. But uh, the story I most want to focus on today, the time I tried to commit suicide. I I don't really tell too many people I've tried to commit suicide. But, um, it was, I was in the fourth grade, and I really wanted a phone. Don't ask me why, why I wanted a phone. I just really wanted a phone. Everyone in my family had one. And. Yeah, that, that's like, a, around that time, it's like, you want to be able to, like, have the same thing as everyone else. At the time. Yeah. But. I like, didn't. I don't know how that's really me. But. Growing up, my, my my family's not very wealthy. We couldn't, we only could afford food and stuff, because we had two teenagers and two fifth and fourth graders, which were me and my brother. Mm -hmm. And me and my brother would always get into fight. In fact, we still have the couch where I broke his nose <laughs> in a fight. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> looking at the couch now, but um. So, I, jo I just remember being real sad because I couldn't get a phone. So, I went out to the shed. I went out to my family shed, and I found some rope. And at the time, I had a bunk bed. And I was... And it's, of course, the little kids wondering if you could truly die or not. Like, testing the waters. Mm. And uh, not every kid tries to kill himself, but I was one of those. And I remember taking a rope, stringing it through my bed, and ha the rope was too long enough to where I couldn't lift myself up. So I had the rope in one hand and lifted myself off the ground. I blacked out. I woke up, still in my room, neck around. The rope still tied around my neck. I untied it, and I put on a turtleneck. Just to show no one I tried to do anything. And, and the thing was, no one found out about it until the next day. Which shocked me. Because I had very caring parents. But for the longest, I feel like they didn't care. Which was probably part of the reason why I tried to die. But they didn't even notice until the school contacted them. And said, your son has rope burns around his neck. And... So I was taken to the hospital, had to wait three days to get into an institution. And I remember during those three days, I was at I GBMC. I was at GBMC I'm hospital, like and I was, I couldn't get out of the bed. The only way I could get out of bed was to either use a bathroom. Well, their rooms were big, so it was, oh, but I was stuck in a room for three days. I didn't have nothing to do, there was nothing to read, and lucky enough, we, I, I had just collect some allowance. So my mom brought my allowance, and we brought dominoes. So we, me and my mom would play dominoes, and then I got admitted into Shepherd Pratt, and then started, that started a whole downhill spiral of, ac of me acting up. I don't really want to get into what all I acted up in, because some of it I still do want to keep private, but I'm sure it'll come yeah, out sooner or later. Yeah, I think that's best to 
Some things are like it's just easier to just keep to yourself instead of sharing it. I mean, I yeah, can relate to you. Especially but since I was way much older. Ex especially since it's only the second podcast. I, I think as we get more followers and I can really spread the word word out, I'll definitely get into that. And I'm actually thinking about having my mom come on. And she's actually an advocate in mental health, mental and drug advocacy. So she gives voices to the ones who can't really vouch for themselves, if that makes sense. That's cool. But um, mm -hmm. ever since then, I've never tried to commit suicide, and it's, well, January was my first success, was my one year mark of not going to the hospital. Not going into Damn. a mental institution, so big, big plus there. Wait, um, this January or the January? Yeah, this January. Were... This January, this past January was my one year mark. But, um. I mean, keep it going. Yeah. But, yeah. Me and my parents didn't get along so well. So, my I called my uncle one day. And I f found him on Facebook. And me and him talked for 15 minutes. May sound really stupid, but we decided right then and there when we talked, I was going to move in with him. So, I move in with him. Everything's going fine. And at the time, I'm living in Altmar, New York, so all my Altmar people are yee yee. But, um, it, was a, it wasn't a very multicultural. It was very, very white small town. Yeah, it was you. It's really it's, a lot yeah. of a lot of There's low income. Point. Yeah, it was a very low income tr kind of white trash town. Um, but I I definitely don't believe the same ideas that my uncle does. Um, my uncle very racist. Um, like he didn't say the N word with the A. He said it with the hard R. But um, Ooh. yeah. I, yeah. he was one I of, mean, he, I looked up to him, he, he was the one I looked up to the most in life, cause, I wasn't, I was joking with him when we were riding up there, he was like, how much do you want to get paid in allowance, and I was like, yeah, you know what, a hundred bucks, and he was like, you sure, I can do that, I was like, yeah, whatever, and then I tried to go back and said I wanted twenty bucks. But then he was like, oh, no, I got all this stuff for you to do. And it ended up, I was getting paid $100 to take out the big tractor, mow the field. Because at the time, we were living on 15 acres of land. Which, if you guys don't yeah, know, that that's a lot of that land. That's yeah. a lot. But we were living on 15 acres right on the Salmon River. And that is one of the most beautiful rivers ever. That I've I've seen personally, but I remember I met one of my best friends there. He was actually my boss's son. His and me and him every weekend there was a bridge that I can't say because it's illegal to fish there. But we fished there, so New York State, you can go fuck yourself. Cause I still <laughs> I still fish there. I will I will go up on the weekends and I will fish there. I won't tell you where it's at, cause fuck New York. <laughs> Alright, so, now that we got that out of the way, but, I caught you this mean law, massive, not the people. Come yeah, on, man. That's yeah, expensive. New York people, I'm, I'm sorry, New Yorker. it's, 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 it's New York laws that I'm against, but, <laughs> stupid private property. You can't, you can't really, you can't really do too much against that, like, each day has its own set of laws. Yeah, well. The police never patrolled there, but they were cool. We got, we only got told told to get out once. But they were like, "You can stay for an hour. We really don't care." The owner says it's fine if you guys can find him. He says anyone can fish here. You just have to ask him. But we never found the guy and still fish there. I still want to find him. But um, it was right where the bass would spawn. So, when bass are getting ready to spawn, they are monsters. And I'm talking about 15 to 16 pound bass. They're huge. And I remember, Damn. I was using... 
Now, I may get to into fishing every once in a while on this channel, so anyone who doesn't fish, just go ahead and just sit with us and listen to the stories. But I used these lures called Panther Martins. Best spinners I have ever used. They have a little divot on them, which makes them spin faster. And you reel in slower, but they still spin the same speed. Awesome little lure. I was using one of those. I cast out. I was under the bridge. And I start slowly reeling in. Next thing I know. Or it looks like we're having a twerking party. Okay. But next thing I know, I get a big hit <laughs> on my line. And I pull up this bat. And I swear to God, it was as big as my arm. It was huge. If I find the picture, I'm definitely going to post it. Wait, did you sell it or did you cook it? That's oh, no, it was illegally caught, so I couldn't do anything with it. Because oh, it was still off-season. It was Wait, catch so and you, release. You, 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 oh, it was catch and release. Yeah. No, not at the time when I actually went fishing. You have to move into... Uh, I mean, I don't fish that much. I mostly hunt. Yeah. And fish. You no. Know? Um, yeah. Like, with me, i never actually done hunting. I only actually fished like once or twice. About yeah. Three, no. About three times I've actually fished. Twice with my uncle after moving here to uh, Pennsylvania. And then once for a high school trip while living here in Pennsylvania. Mm hmm. It, we went deep sea fishing and we ended up catching like these uh, blue big mouth bass, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. But like, uh, pretty, they were like these pretty big fish. And we were actually mm -hmm. allowed to take them home and eat, eat hmm. them. Yeah, you were probably on a charter boat. Charter boats yeah. let you and, like, do it, that. And it, and it was like a, it was like a, like for a, for a club that I was in that was actually called the fishing club. Which was all like you talked about fishing and all that, like not just uh, just like fishing alone, but so some other you know, aspects to it. If anything happens, you know how to fish. Mhm. Mm <laughs> if the world ends, we know how to fish. <laughs> Give a man a fish, hunt, feed him so for a day. If you, if you guys need some deer, I'm good to go, bro. Yeah, I know how to cook a mean <laughs> steely. What you do is you put butter on them. First, you split them open. You put butter on the inside. You you season them, then you put them on the grill, close the grill, let them cook for about 15 minutes, open it up, pull the bone out, all bones will come out, and you just have this beautiful slab of fish meat, and the scales already come off, and you eat it, and it's the most heavenly experience ever. But everything I caught was wild caught. I... My f uncle never bought farm-raised anything. Everything was wild-caught from Wegmans. Yes, we were that kind of people. My uncle owns multiple businesses. So, yeah, we were kind of I'll rolling. I'll be right back. Uh, huh? I'll be right back. Give me a couple minutes. Yeah, you're good. Right but back. he had the most amazing collection of fishing gear. But, uh... Let's get let's get on to cars, shall we? He had an yeah. Audi A8 Titanium Edition. Oh my God, that car was nice. It had heated and cooled seats. It had m massaging little. You know how some like seat covers have massaging massage. Yeah, I know. Them? It's like um some cars have like. The um, shiatsu balls. Seat hitting and then the massaging one. Yeah, and... yeah. He had those. And Ooh. the coolest thing about the car was when you drove it, instead of having, like, speedometer and all that, I forget what that's called, it had a heads-up display to where when you were sitting in it, it actually looked like you were in a fighter jet. No lie. That was my favorite car to drive up there. But he also had a GMC, a 2013 GMC Sierra with Duramax diesel and Allison transmission. Not bad. And I would actually, and I, at the time I was living in, uh, he was, he had a big house, but I wasn't living in the house. I was living in Jayco, so I had the pleasure of getting up and moving where I wanted to on the property. But I would always... That truck was my baby. 
I will never forget that truck. And then he also had a blazer, a little blazer, not the greatest thing on earth, but it was great from point A to point B. And I just remember driving it. That was the first car I ever drove. And my uncle what, didn't believe in driving in a parking lot first. First thing I did when I got in that car is we hit one of the major interstates. And it was Jesus, my, it was my first. Kill you? No, it's, <laughs> or, it was, uh, in New York 895, if you know where that is. It's right off the Mexico exit. Jesus Christ. Yeah. He made you drive through there? Yeah, but first we hit Pulaski, drove through Pulaski. We stopped at the racetrack, because I've been smoking for, God, eight years now. But we, we we stopped in there, we got some cigarettes, and he was like, do you want to drive for it a little bit? And I was like, yeah. And so I got in, started up the tr started it up, and he ba and he pulled in, so I had to back out. And then we went to lunch at one of the restaurants in Pulaski, and I learned, and he taught me how to parallel park my first time driving. Still remember how to parallel park nice. to this day. All right, but um, I just remember parallel parking, and it was stressful because it was my first time ever driving. One. And number two, I'd never even thought of how to parallel park before. And I remember almost hitting, almost hitting this real nice car behind me. I, I don't know what type of car it was, but I remember almost hitting it. And I saw the guy's look on his face that was parked behind us. He, he was just like, oh my god, he's going to hit my car. <laughs> and I was about in, a quarter okay. inch from hitting his car, no lie. And stopped just in time, drove over, and parked perfectly. I was just like, oh my god, it's time for a lunch and a cigarette. So, of course, we got out, we ate lunch. And now, my uncle was very religious when it came to smoking. It was his early morning cigarette, his lunchtime cigarette, his mid-afternoon cigarette, and then his dinner cigarette, and then his before bed cigarette. So, we'd have six to ten cigarettes a day. Take four or five away from that. But, so we stopped, we ate lunch, we had a cigarette, and he was like, hey, do you want to go to New York City? And... You can ask... My hometown. Yep. You can ask anyone. That's a, that's about a two to three hour drive. Maybe even more. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a drive. <laughs> it's a bob. It, it's a And really it was my drive. first time on the road, and I drove all the way to New York City. We went to Times Wait, what Square. Part? Times Square. Oh, yeah. I don't live and that I far from And I remember the many... traffic was horrendous. But I made it yeah, through. Yeah, New York back. City traffic, you you just need to hope you get the hell out of there in under yeah. 30 minutes. Because as soon as 30 minutes passed, you're done. Yep. There, There's this little slot of time you got to get in there when, when the traffic's not bad. But as soon as maybe 15 minutes goes by, 15 minutes is all it takes in Times Square. From traffic to be flowing nice. To it being an absolute... Wish I had a button to bleep. So, yeah. We'll, ju we'll just go with... Paul's show. But... Then I drove back, and I fell asleep, and I woke up the next morning, and he was like, wanna drive the Audi? And it was... My boss and his wife were just getting married. And I drove it all the way from... From the little town I lived in, in Altmar, all the way to Fulton, which isn't that far, but it takes a while f where the venue was. But I got some amazing pictures. 
Like, they were my top quality pictures. Or at least one was. Two or three, maybe. Okay, but that's besides the point. <laughs> so, and now I'm back in Maryland. Living in the same house I've lived in for over, God, 14 years. But, yeah. It's just kind of been me. So, mm. Let's talk about some urban legends, how sh sh shall we? Uh, before we do it, before we talk about anything else, can I just say... I placed a mouse trap earlier, like a, a glue trap, to catch uh -huh. a mouse earlier. Yep. yep. And I went mute for a second because I heard it squeaking. Uh-huh. I you went to a take a look, and it was the mouse trap right in the trap that I legit just Nice. Placed. Nice. See that? And that's... it's just there, struggling to get out. I'm just, no, I'm not gonna eat the no, mouse. That's eat bad. It. I remember <laughs> I lived I up. Said in... You don't eat it. No, I lived when I was up in New York, and I lived in that Jayco. There were hundreds of field mice in it. So I put glue traps everywhere. But still, every now and again, I would. St I always wore shoes when I sleep, because they were always at your feet when I'd wake up to go to the bathroom at night. Can you stop hitting me? But, yeah, I woke up one night, and it was the first night I didn't sleep with shoes on. And that was when I learned to sleep with shoes on. And I got out of bed, and of course, I go to the bathroom, I do my thing. I walk back into the bedroom, and I hear this, <coughs> and I'm like, oh shit, what was that? I fell, I fall asleep. I wake up the next morning, and there's a dead mouse at the foot of my bed. And I'm like, oh, that's what that sound was last night. That's nasty. And now, see, I, I have this irrational fear of mice. I hate mice. So I literally got kitchen tongs, picked them up, and cleaned them out. I opened up the door, and I kind of catapulted them out. Oh, mercy to mice, bro. Like, there, was, there used to be this one mouse that mm. always, um, this is one when I used to live in Queens. Um, I, I was, I was living in an apartment, but what's it called? Since my dad was the super there, he, um, we had like the bad part, which was uh -huh. a really nice porch, you know? Yeah. Um, so there was this one time this mice was always annoying the annoying me uh -huh. it, it, it will pop his head out look at me and then run in i'm like wait a second you will see i'm going to get him mm. and well, my mom said that she heard like a uh, squeal so it it was the rat that got on the glue mm. oh so, rats are the worst you know how... rats and mice and mm -mm, don't, don't even get me with the bro, mm -hmm. Don't get me started at the ones that are the size of a fucking cat, bro. Bro, those are I I could never imagine coming across one of those. I'd, Dude, um, in I'd my literally old get a shotgun. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. Sorry, <laughs> I'd take called? a shotgun to that. No, I, I wouldn't even try a glue trap. I wouldn't try even a guillotine. I, I would get a shot. Just the moment you see it, just you immediately just I just got a crowbar yep. and started whacking the shit out of it, bro. Oh, hell no, They're I slower than that. the smaller ones. They're really slower than the slow, the, the um smaller, smaller ones. ones. Yeah. But they really move fast still, bro. Mm hmm I'm actually surprised I got one with a crowbar, and it wouldn't die. See, I, I always get feel bad into, when like, I try to beat parts, something to death. But let's just say I hit it a lot of times. Yeah. And so it, it, it was the inside wait, wait, outside. Wait, wait, I got to do a little message real quick. PETA, we're sorry for talking about this. We don't really care, though. Welcome to Buncho Talk. Okay, but as you were saying. Yeah, rats. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. See, you guys live in the city. Now, I'm not going to say anything bad about New York Cityers. But how do you deal deal with the rats? I, that's one thing I didn't Which get. Is, um, they're in the subway mostly, so... You really don't, don't really care about... We don't really care about the, the ones in 
to the subway. Yeah. Now, as soon as they start going to our house, dude, we turn into a we turn our house into a military base, bro. Yep. We turn our house into North Korea. As soon as we see one, <laughs> yep. <laughs> see, I remember I remember when I was in New York, we had this one rat. I swear to God, it was the size of chi of a Chihuahua. No. Kind of small. Oh, no. I hate those. Mm hmm. So, my uncle was big gun collector. My, my uncle was the most armed man that I know. And he had a Smith and Wesson 500. Ooh. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know where this story's going when, as soon as I bring Chick up the 500. Yeah. Wait, so, I so, he unlocks the gun safe and he says, Be very careful with this. This gun will knock you flat on your ass. And I'm like, I oh, got does. it. I got it. <laughs> I thought it was just regular little pew pistol that you hold with one hand. Oh, hell no. <laughs> That's a whole canyon, bro. Bro, that That's is a, a whole canyon. canyon. If you see the That's bullets on them, bro, if you see the bullets on them, they're like an... God. I think they're I like an inch, an inch long. But let me... Oh, my God. No, oh, yeah, can't. I know it, it's like the, the gunpowder, like, bro. Bro, it is every man's wet dream to own one, or at least mine. It's mine. But I mean, so I, I shot just, one before. Let's I just say, um, did you use the Express, the Seven Hundred Express? No, I didn't use the Express one. The Express, the Seven Hundred Expresses. Are there big bullets? They're big boys. My uncle only uses the 700 Express. But who? Yeah, they're 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 big. That's a lot of damage. Bro, it is a lot of damage. So I go outside. I have this. I, the gun's four or five pounds unloaded. Loaded, it's like six or seven. So I go outside, yeah. carrying a seven-pound gun with me. I see the rat, I get ready, I pull back, I fire, it gave me a concussion, I was only using one hand, went right into the front of my head, still one shot the same dead, you? yeah, yeah, still, still shot the same dead, but, um, gave myself a concussion, I was, I woke up in the hospital, and apparently I'd been out for an hour and a half. <laughs> My uncle heard the the gun go off and me go ah, and I was out for an hour and a half. Jesus, the only time that I blacked out when I was shooting a gun will be when I shot my first shotgun. <laughs> Bro, when you shoot a shotgun I... for the first time, it's over. Speaking of which, it didn't knock me out a hundred percent. I was out for like. 20 seconds 30 mm -hmm. but dude it, it was, i tell was... you the fucking re the recoil oh my god yeah probably not gonna get monetized you want to know what was my care. first shotgun hmm i had the m900 with a pistol grip in my my first shotgun that i ever shot was I don't know if you guys ever heard of this, but it's Caltech to KP120. And yeah, if you play GTA heard. 5, it is it is the boot pump shotgun. And it has a rotating oh. chamber. So when you shoot it, it's boom. Boom, 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 boom. It's mo It was a semi-automatic. We didn't have the pump. I've seen, I've seen those before. Those Bro, are they're... powerful. Oh my god, are they ever. But anyway, let me get back to the story. So, oh, so sort of like a striker, if you're saying like a rotating cylinder for it. Yeah, yeah but it didn't sure. have, it wasn't a drum like the striker. But anyway, my yeah. uncle had this special sling that when you were shooting a shotgun, you'd put the buttstock into the sling, and it had a little pad on the shoulder. And me, my uncle owned a kill house. If you don't know what a kill house is, it is basically... An army style, go throughout a house, shoot targets, try to get as much points as possible. Pretty much. So, 
I went in there, and he actually has a special blank gun that when you open the door, it'll start going off. It's a full auto, so all you hear is bop, 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 bop. So my adrenaline's pumping. I'm going through. I'm taking out every target. But the next scene I know, I walk straight into a target. So I'm good for about 30 to 40 feet. And that's about 90% of it. And then next scene I know, it pops up right in front of me, front of me and hits me in the head. And I'm like, what was that? I look and it's a target. And the guy's like, you failed. You died. So... <laughs> I was mad. But he said it, I was one of the best shooters he ever saw. Besides himself and his army buddies. But there's always this one story that I will always remember with my uncle. And that was the time he went to the Dominican Republic in the, when he was in the Airborne. 82nd Airborne. But... Oh he yeah, that's when um they tried to um what's it called invade. It was a, it was a fight against communism. Yeah, pretty much. But he went to the Domin Dominican Republic, and he always tells me the story of the first time he was parachuting in. So when in the DR at the time there was a bunch of corn or um sugar, sugar something, I forget what it's called, but. Sugar cane, Sugar cane, that's what it is, yeah. So, he saw that splitting. And he was like, oh shit, I'm gonna get into combat as soon as I get down. I'm not gonna have time. I'm gonna die. So, he got down. He landed. He unstrapped himself. He got himself all set up. And next thing you know, there's four or five kids, each carrying a bucket. A galvanized bucket of ice and coke. And they go like, hey, I want a coke? And the best part about it was it was a top secret infiltration. So no one knew about it, except for the army. And next thing you know, there's four or five kids coming up. And and he goes, and they offer him a Coke. And he's like, fuck yeah, I'll take a Coke. It was... He was a better storyteller than me. But, um... Yeah. Anyway... Let's get into urban legends. I'm actually excited for this segment. Oh no. Bigfoot. It's a big one. Yeah, that Bigfoot. I I have to say I believe. I'm I'm a believer. Me too. Like if it just think, if the world's ocean is only one percent explored. What about the rest of the Earth? Pretty much. There's some places that you know, can't even be. You know, um, I forgot like the, the Goat Man. Park. Goat Man, yeah, that's really big in Ohio. Goat Man's Bridge. Oh, dude, I've been there. Oh my God, dude, I will tell you that it's not a good feeling on that bridge. Oh, oh. It's really not. You feel like somebody's watching you. At all times. And the stories that they told me when I was there, I was just like freaking out. <laughs> it's a good urban legend. The the Jersey Devil. Oh. It's an another good one. Uh, I forgot how it went. It was something about a mom that didn't want the kid, and then she's like, "I let the devil no. take it." And then, no, it goes. The there was this once mother, in the woods of New Jersey, and her and Satan had a kid. Apparently, don't know how it happened, but her and Satan had a kid, and out came the. Jersey Devil. Ever since then, the Jersey Devil has been spotted in multiple occasions. And I and I remember this one. I don't know if you guys, when you were younger, watched Cake Boss. But my family loved Cake Boss. Oh my and they god, did a I cake. still watch him today. Bro, they did a him. cake on that, on the Jersey Devil. And it fell apart as soon as it got there. 
Like it was torn apart. Because it, from, from what I gather, it was too close. It was too look like to what the real creature looked like, and the real creature didn't want to know whatever, what it looked like. Didn't want to be seen. But um, you know what? Let me let me go grab my tablet. I'll be back in a second. It's time to research. Hey, okay. okay, everybody. I'm always that mouse is just there squeaking and struggling to get out, but he know he's not gonna get out. Kill it already, jeez. I'm not gonna kill it. Oh, Dude, don't make me suffer. drive all the way the. No, I'm gonna let it suffer. Live. I'm gonna let it suffer. So. <laughs> you should not show it no mercy. Just kill it. This isn't showing no mercy. I mean, th well, no, this isn't showing mercy. I only, it would only make sense that I'm showing mercy if I killed it right away. Hey, kill it. No, I feel That's showing I, I, mercy. I, I Alright, like, I'm looking. I mean, like, killing it slowly, I'm not showing mercy because I'm making it suffer. Slowly. Not, like, suffer like that, bro. I mean, like, killing it slowly. Slow, cut a limb off and then cut the limb off. Hmm. No, because he's we'll, we'll look at the most. Like, he's not gonna get we'll out. look at the most famous urban legend that there is, and that's Bloody Mary. Bigfoot? Oh, what? <laughs> I thought it was Bigfoot. Is that really the the biggest in the United States? Um, right now, I I, I don't know if it's the biggest, but it's one of the most well known. But so apparently, a long time ago, there was a little girl named Mary. She grew very ill and fell into a deep coma. The doctor was old and feeble, and without knowing any better, he believed she was dead. He informed the family that they had, and they had a funeral, and laid the girl to rest. No one realized that they had buried her to de alive. So, <laughs> oh man, that's as I'm reading more and more, I'm like, oh my god, this is dark. So, Ma Mary's What's family lived very different? close to the graveyard where she. Where she was laid to rest. The first night, Mary's mother thought she heard a scream coming from Mary's grave, but no one believed her. Days later, Mary's mother convinced the family to dig up her grave. When they did, they found Mary dead, but they also saw, uh, sorry, they also saw s scratches on the top of the coffin, and Mary's fingernails were bloody from her efforts trying to escape, the sh escape the grave. Um. And if you if you guys, I'm not gonna say that you do this, at all, cause I I don't like ghosts. No, but, uh, I'm doing. But apparently on Friday the 13th, turn off all the lights. Bloody Mary, Bloody out. Mary, Bloody Mary. Oh. Shit. Yeah, and she'll appear in the mirror. And you if you don't hurry and turn the light person. on, she will stab you in your back. What's it called? I won't do it because one, I'm really superstitious. Two, I got a lot of mirrors in my house, so uh -huh. if I run out the bathroom, <laughs> there's another one in the hallway right in front of the bathroom. And then I got like three in my room, and then there's two in my mom's room. There's another one in the other hallway. I'm telling you, I ain't gonna do that at all. Mm, let's see. Oh, here's another big uh, one right now. That's the Shadow Man. Shadow Man? Nope. Shadow Man. Not Slenderman, but Shadow Man. Oh, I heard about him. Yep. Maybe I met him. Maybe. We could we could have. But, um... Finest. So, the story goes, mm -hmm. nobody knows for sure who or what the Shadow Man is. But may, but it may be a ghost of a man who was convicted of stalking and kidnapping children. He was caught at at a home he had broken into a few days before, and he was dragged off to the gallows after his trial. Trial, when he tr overpowered the guards and ran into the woods, a huge search was organized. The entire forest was searched thoroughly, but he was never found. A few years later. Children started going missing again, and some thought it may have been him. 
Their suspicions were put to rest, however, after one of the missing children came back. A five-year-old boy who was questioned, and during a police interview, he revealed he was captured by a shadow man with big red eyes and a funny hat. Since then, there have been, been many more reports of this, of this shadow man. The shadow is described as being a shadow of a tall man. Any form he chooses and slips through any door. He will plague what children with nightmares fuck, about bro? having a strange man in Bowler's hat. What the fuck, Grabbing bro? them and taking them to an old hut. After a few what days, he will creep the into the children's room, stare them down with his glowing red eyes until they wake up. The children that will what be... The, the children will be petrified with fear. That's when the shadow man will whisk them off, and the child will never be seen again. The scariest part is he could be anywhere, anytime, and you can never be sure if he's if he is there watching you. What the hell, bro? Holy. He, the way that you described them really looks like the story that I said in the, of the, in the first episode, bro. Yeah. Oh my god, bro. I'm telling you, I you described him exactly like he looked like, but my shadow man was nine feet tall. He he did wear a hat. He had a really dark voice. Um and he chased me out the woods. Mm. And then the hellhounds appeared, so, you know what? Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> what about Slenderman? Because Slenderman is a really, really, really big, um, conspiracy. One of the most common. Yeah, he's not really a urban legend, as he is something called a creepypasta. Yeah. Yeah, but there has been, but the, the reason why he was actually made known as a thing, because there are actual, like, actual life pictures of him. Yeah. That are supposed to be But you real, also gotta remember, nowadays, like, people can Photoshop. So yeah, half the like, stuff... Well, like, there was, the thing is, like, I'm, like it supposedly was now, like, now, like, it's now, like, like, it's... Suppose it was real, cause like Slender's been a thing for a really long time. I forgot this Japanese urban legend's name, but it's about a, this woman that she was really beautiful and she cheated on her husband, so he cut her face. So basically, what she, he did is, you know, like the Joker. Yeah, Buck Fifty is in prison. It's called a Buck Fifty. Don't ask me how I know this. I will not answer. So, what's it called? I'd rather not she just cut, have you. He cut her, oh, bro. Her, her mouth ear to ear. And Here's basically, a... she hunts. Oh, I know. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and then she's, she asks you if you're pretty. And she's pretty. And then if you say yes, she will cut you. And then you will bleed out and die. If yep. you say no, she will kill you on the spot. But there's this thing that, um, what's it called? Kids actually found out. Had a um really confuse her. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like when she asks you that, you say so so, and then she will stay thinking about it, and then it gives you a time to like run away. Yeah. But here's one that a lot of like a lot of my friends talk about, and that's a rake. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about it, but um. So during the summer of 2003. <laughs> Events in, in the northeastern United States involving a strange human-like creature sparked brief local media interest before an apparent blackout was enacted. Don't know what an act. If anyone knows what a blackout is, go ahead and put that in a blackout? the comment. Yeah, a blackout was enacted. I don't know what that means when it says What's enacted. What's it called? Uh, a blackout is when, like, a big portion of a city... Basically, um, goes dark with no electricity. Yeah, literal or no information was left intact, as most online and written accounts of the creature were mysteriously disappeared. 
primarily focused in rural New York State and found in Idaho, self-proclaimed witnesses told stories of their encounter with a creature of unknown origin. Emotions ranged from ex uh, extremely traumatic levels of frightened discomfort to, to an almost childlike sense of playfulness and curiosity. While their published versions are no longer on record, the memories were, remain powerful. Several of the involved parties began looking for answers that year. In 2006, the collaboration had accumulated nearly two dozen documents between uh, two dozen documents dating between the 12th century and present day, spanning four continents. In almost all cases, the stories were identical. I've been in contact with a member, or this is, and I, I'm about to quote someone. Don't know who it is. But I've been in contact with a member of this group and was able to get some excerpts from their upcoming book. End quote. End quote. And th this is called A Suicide Note 1964. Begu begin quotes. As I prepare to take my life, I feel it necessary to assuage any guilt or pain I have introduced through this act. It is not fault of anyone other than him. For once I awoke and felt his presence, and once I awo awoke and saw his form, once again I awoke and heard his voice, and looked into his eyes. I could not, I cannot sleep without fear of what I might next awake to experience. I cannot ever wake. Goodbye. And that was, end quotes. Found in the same wooden box were two empty envelopes addressed to William and Rose, and one two personal le and one loose personal letter with no envelope. Uh, begin quotes. Dear Stellini, I have prayed for you. He has spoke your name. End quotes. Well, the what the hell is what I gotta say from that. Like, that, that's mm. just weird. And the rest are just, like, w accounts and stuff that I can't really read without copyright. Because a lot of them were paragraphed from something that I cannot give a name to, so, yeah, gotta stop there. Stupid copyright. Sometimes, sometimes it comes in handy but other times it's not um but like you were saying about slenderman that's something i want to get into i don't really have the story about all that I'll, I'll definitely, if you want to explain it, I'll, I'll keep looking at it. Oh, bro, I found what you were talking about. Te its name is Techie Techie. And Techie Techie is a Japanese schoolgirl who roams the train stations of Japan. In, this, in life, this girl was a scaredy cat and people are always playing practical jokes on her. One day at the train station after school... Her pr friends decided to put a cicada, a bug that appears in summer, on her shoulder. Sadly, this turned out to be a fatal prank. She was so scared she fell off the platform and was hit by... Don't know how to pronounce that word, but it's the fastest train in Japan. And her body was sliced in two. Now she is haunting train stations in Japan, dragging herself with her ed elbows and sometimes her hands. She has known to kill oh, people hell. with her sight and split people in half with har with the harsh speed of the 
Um, I'm gonna try to pronounce the fastest train's name. Shinkansen. Don't hate me if I'm wrong. To make oh, vic I her victims feel her pain. Her name is Techie Techie or Bata Bata because of the noise she makes when she's dragging herself around. Oh, here it is. I found I found Slendy. So Yeah. We'll we'll go ahead and, and read all the versions of it cuz there are now multiple versions out. Um but sl the Slenderman is believed to be a man dressed in black in a black business suit, like one's worn in men, men in black. And about six feet tall, the Slender Man was a man who was beat, who was beat with a log, stabbed with a two-foot stick, and hung from a tree with his hands, with his arm, uh, arms, hands, and legs all pulled out of sockets. The legend is that in the daytime, the Slender Man will most likely show up in open areas with trees, to the side, to the side of an open, open empty road. Or in the woods, or in any areas filled with trees. Most survivors of the Slenderman says he shows up at night, shows up in open windows, dark open rooms, blank TV screens, and in large crowds of people. The Slenderman only kills kids younger than 16. There Oof, are I'm ways safe. to toy with him, but you may be risking your own your own death. His arms, legs, and fingers and toes will stretch so that he is up to 34 feet tall with a bone-breaking sound. If he appears to you, turn away. He has the power to control your body. Where, When you wake up, you will be tied laying down in the woods where he was killed. A 547-pound log will be hanging over your head. He will ask you a question. If you get the answer right, he will break bro both your arms and legs. If you get it wrong, he will slowly stick his fingers down your neck and pull out your heart. Holy crap. Jeez. I'm safe then, because I'm 18, so. Yep. <laughs> Oof. Gucci. Uh. Well. But my, my younger siblings aren't. Well, yeah. Geez. Well, make sure you shut your windows. Isn't he like a ghost? It, it doesn't say if he's a ghost or not. But, um. So. Some of this. What's the second version? Oh, that was a lot more graphic. Don't know how it can get more graphic than the original one, but it was graphic. Like, to Third the one. point it made me uncomfortable. And I don't get uncomfortable very easily. Third one? Uh, they were, the rest of them were highly gore, grotesque. Jeez. And almost put them in per, in, like, I don't get disturbed too easy, but this is most definitely one of those moments. So. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like one of those people who really doesn't get, like, grossed out or disturbed. Because, yeah. like, this is something I'm, like, used to. So, like, it's it's more so, like, I get a bit of a spine chill, but that's about it. Yeah. I'll be right back. But, um, yeah. Like, it's, what I've noticed is it's hard for me to get really grossed out I, I watch serial killer documentaries for a living and look at crime scene photos very very hard for me to get uh disturbed but um anyway that's all the time we have left for for today so thank you listening to yeah Thank you for listening to Buncho Talk. I will see you guys in the next episode.
Bye-bye.